Tell me if you like when I do it good. Tell me if it feels right. Oh, it's you. Okay, I go in and I start taking things out to make space for other things. This process is extremely crucial. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to my home studio. I'm Archie Beats and I am here to help. And we have an awesome video today, man. If you guys like the way that song sounds and the way I mix my vocals, give me a thumbs up. So today I'm going to show you guys how I mix my vocals and my approach to it. When it comes to mixing vocals, it can be a very frustrating process. I know a lot of you guys out there are probably on this video because you want to know how to improve your mixing. You've, you've watched a lot of tutorials on mixing vocals and you got some great information and you want a little more. You want to better yourself. You want to see a different perspective. With that being said, no engineer mixes the same. Every engineer, every pro engineer, every beginner engineer that's on the right track have their certain way of doing it and their process to getting there. It's all about the uniqueness of that engineer that keeps the clients coming back for more you know and that's what the goal is you want to create something and you want to have a process you want to have a certain sound that people and artists can really appreciate so what is mixing to me mixing is the art of creating space and creating balance within a song. When it comes to mixing, when it comes to creating a song, if the artist appreciated and the artist audience appreciated, that's what the main goal is. With that being said, I've learned this from the dinosaurs, some of the, the most successful engineers in the industry that were my college professors, that were my um, engineer professors. If it sounds good, then it is good. Don't overthink it. Don't be a victim of overthinking. Before we get started, if you guys are interested in anything that you've seen in my home studio, be sure to check the description description below because I have everything listed and I have other gear on there that could possibly help you on your creative journey. Also, if you guys like videos like this, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the like button and comment below on some ideas or some problems that you guys have, any type of obstacles you ran into when it comes to mixing. Just comment below and your boy see if he can help you out with that. Let's jump right to the screen and let me show you guys my process. This is what we have here. These are the vocals and this is the song. Like an old school, yeah, yeah. Do a hundred on your road, yeah. You can see a cop take it slow, yeah. I see you like to make me work. Return to action while you twerk. I see, yeah. Body, yeah. On me, yeah. Let's take it to the old school. Tell me if you like when I put it down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me if you like when I do it good. Tell me if it feels right oh, It's you And the first thing when it comes to mixing, my approach is like my, this is what I do every mix is I organize the session and don't be intimidated by everything you guys see. And the two things that I make sure that I organize is the actual track. And since I produce all of my songs and I record them myself and I mix my own vocals, I already know how I want my session to look so it can be streamlined for my workflow. So the first thing I do is I organize the tracks. What I mean by that is I put my drums up top, put my instruments in between, I put my special vocals, whatever effects that 
I want to add. I put those usually at the bottom and then I add a aux track of what I'm sending everything to so I can have control over the entire track. I don't need to separate my drums because the way I mix my tracks is when I produce them, I mix them almost at the same time of producing the instrumental. So I've, after I organize my tracks, I color code all of them, including the vocals. As you guys can see, it got the green go on it because vocals are go. That's what vocals mean. And then I have auxiliaries that is like basically buses, sins of the entire vocals, whether it's the vocal background, the vocal verse has its own aux track. The vocals um, backgrounds have their own track and have a special part, like a special phrase. I put them on the uh, on their own aux track as well. And then I name them. So today's signal flow, guys, is my Norman U87. Preamp I use for these vocals is the, like I said, I produced the song. I'm singing it. I wrote it and I write as I go along as well. But this is kind of like I wanted to give it an R&B old school kind of classic but still modern day feel to it the first thing that i did was of course when recording you want to record a great signal you want to have the best signal to noise ratio and you want to record a great signal that you are happy with you just don't want to throw anything and then start to work after you <laughs> recorded everything you want to start working as you're recording so i did a lot of the eqing with the neve 1073 unison pre from universal audio and I got a lot of work done. With that being said, I the first plugin that I even added to the lead vocals um, as far as post-recording was the 1176, my favorite vocal compressor. This is Glue. As a matter of fact, someone just bought out a rendition to this um, compressor called the Gluey instead of the Bluey because it is a glue. As you guys can see, the compression is it's, it's pretty decent, but my attack is fast and release is really subtly slow. And my ratio is at eight. And this is just the perfect sound that I wanted to get from that. And after that, I did my auto tuning. I am a baritone. So whenever, whatever your vocal <laughs> register is, or your vocal type is, you want to make sure you put it here because it just sounds great. If you are a male, it's going to most likely be alto, tenor, bass, and legato. Because I'm a composer, I like that kind of flowy. It just sounds better on legato for me. And the trio, like, kept the pattern the same. But the humanizing is up. And the tuning, the retune is it's a little over fast. But this is, some people drive it all the way up to zero and crank up the, but we, we just, this is pretty much it. And the key, of course, you want to make sure that you have the right key as well. That can improve your vocals by a thousand percent if you know the key of the song and you set your tune to that. But it's the same for everything I did lead, including the ad-libs, it's exactly the same. With the exception of if I want to do a cool filter effect, I add like this basic Pro Tools EQ on it, and that's, that's pretty much it for that. But let's talk about the bus. The bus is a completely different story. The aux in for the lead vocal, I added a de and I started de at 5506, that is 5,000, that's 5K, 55K. I started DSing there and it's not really, didn't really do anything, didn't do any side chain or anything like that. And then I compressed it again. I got some more, we got some more compression. This is not parallel compression, but I wanted to glue everything. It's, it's basically enough for me. This is pretty much the standards of how I mix my vocals. I put a compressor on the leads and then I put a compressor on the lead auxiliary. And that pretty much gives me the sound that I'm going for. I said, I don't want to overcome complicate this guys i do not want to overcomplicate this but the la2a for me is the best overall vocal compressor um, that i use in my vocal chain when it comes to mixing vocals and let's talk about the eqing although i said i record the best signal to noise ratio and i record the best eqing and how i want it captured on tape when you e yeah listen to this yeah on me yeah, let's take it to the old school. So with the overall EQ for the leads, I start the approach is subtractive EQing. I took out right here at 500, a little under there to take out the muddiness, although it was what I wanted when I listened to the overall mix. After I listened to the song and the production and all the vocal production, I go in and I start taking things out to make space for other things. This process is extremely crucial. In your vocal auxiliaries, this is your opportunity to pull things out. It's your opportunity to add subtract. I am a subtractive EQer. 
I am the studio version of the equalizer, subtractive EQ. I don't want to too much add anything there, but because I'm recording on the Norman U87 and I do take some of the highs out on a Neve 1073, I add a little more to the pronunciation there. And when I started this about 10 years ago, when I listened to songs, I heard that like I'm a stickler with the pronunciation. So right at 10K, that's my signature. That's how I know if somebody sent me a session, I know it's my session because I know right there at the 10K, it's about plus three <laughs> decibels of 10K. And that's that's my thing. Like I just know it's going to always be about three <laughs> right there sitting right there. So I'm like, yeah, I probably did this. Most likely I did this. So the subtractive EQing is exactly that's pretty much it, guys. That is Tell it. Tell me if you like when I put it down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That sounds great, right? That sounds great. That is my only process to my lead vocals. Now, the backgrounds is a completely different story. The background vocals are, you have to make space for the lead. So it's going to be a lot more subtractive um, than the lead vocals because you don't want too much lows, too many mids in there because it will conflict with your lead vocals. After this and after we do the background vocals, and I show you guys what I did with the back background vocals, we're going to go over the effects for the um, for all the vocals. Archer Archie Beast. <laughs> So, <laughs> you're not waging war with your lead vocals. You are pretty much assisting them. You are complimenting your lead vocals when you're doing background vocals, especially in R&B music. You want to make sure that the, the background vocals are doing their best job to make the lead vocal sound as great as possible, accented, like just like it, it got a full ecosystem of like vocal sweetness around it. And that's what I do with my background vocals. So let's talk about the harmonies. Most of the time, I stack and stack and stack and stack and stack and stack. But I didn't do this in this case. And when I record the song, I actually had you guys in mind when I recorded this song. I wanted to show you guys and demo. I decided early on that I wanted to demonstrate to you guys that you don't have to do too much. And I don't want to overcomplicate over anything for you guys to where it, it discourages you. So when it comes to the background vocals, I do one harmony. The background harmony. It is on me. So you guys see the doubling what we have there. So the higher part without the doubling sounds like this. And with it, it sounds like this. So let's go ahead and highlight. And we rolled off a lot in the lower frequencies. We rolled off right here about 554. So it could make space for the lead vocals. You don't want it too beefy. That is on me, yeah. That Same is on thing. Me, yeah. That is on me, yeah. That is on me, yeah. And you guys hear how the double is kind of, it got rid of all that beef that's in there. So it can make space for the, the lead vocal. We want the lead vocals to be as thick as possible without you know, compromising the mix. It's all about making space. Every part is important, but you guys know what I'm saying. It's the parts that people are gonna like, yo, this that part sounds real good. And everything complements e each other as is. So as you guys can see with the auto tune, it's gonna be a little different. We're about two up from there. We at nine and the humanizer is, see, notice that the pattern is hard. Unlike the legato and the humanizing is, is at 17 versus 100. And we have these at alto and tenor. It creates a different dimension, a different feel, different vibe. Two up two faster made that big of a difference in the entire mix because that's what this is about. Let's talk about the hook. Banger, and you know it, the way you walk around like you own it. And you got that old school, yeah, old school, yeah, old school. Yeah, with a little bit of news cuz right bang and you know That's the part I want you guys to hear. You walk around like you own it. 
the thing about that is what you call a flanger. And I use a avid flanger. It's, you know, we got the mix about 50%. When I slapped it on, I was pretty much happy with it. I played with the feedback a little bit, but when I slapped it on, it played with it a little bit. So if you want to get that crazy kind of like Chris Brown kind of tape, it's enough for you to do that. So the hook, I wanted the hook to be strong, and I do separate my hook leads and my hook backgrounds as well, even if they're doing the same thing, because you want your hook lead to actually stand out. And that's how you achieve that sound. What I've noticed is that even if you use a doubler and you use them at the same percentages with a flanger, that is still a subtle, subtle difference between the two. And that's just the feel. Once again, if it sounds good, it is good. And the thing about it is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to be able to get in the studio and not really try to sound like anybody. I want you guys to pretty much be able to create your own sound and know how to get your own sound. Every time you go in the studio, you can get something different, but you know exactly how to achieve it without having to sound like anybody else or feel pressure to sound like anybody else. I have fun doing this, and that's what I want you guys to do. I want you to have fun, and I want you guys to be able to create your, create your own sound and your own thing without feeling pressure. Guys, the background vocals is pretty much just that and as far as the compression for the total background vocals we did the same thing we got the 1176 fast attack and but for this one the release i took the release up to three and i have my ratio set to four because i didn't want it to be so compressed um I, I just wanted a slight just a slight compression on it i didn't want really to just go crazy like that and the same thing with the eqing we have a subtle subtraction right there it, for the hook since i'm already pulling out so much on the effects and so much on the actual vocal tracks themselves i kind of spread out the cue a little bit the cue when, when you talk about the cue it's basically the focal point of the eq if you take in the cue it will slim up and it will target one specific frequency and when you widen it out you can actually spread it out and attack a lot you have a wider frequency range when you spread out your cue it's definitely a little wider than the lead you see that and you see that because that's balanced there although they're overlapping somewhere around 10k it's still not conflicting to a point but i'm you see i'm pulling right here at 20k as well i'm pulling down so this is when it's to come to making space that's a good way to do it is eq and eqing is a bare skin and arrowhead tool that you can use with that so and let's talk about the sins if you guys will see buses let me tell you how i organize my sins first my sins are always at the the highest bus number possible because that's the last thing I I typically do or it, it is my effects. I do my effects last. And as far as the reverb that you guys hear in the song, I use the dream verb dream verb from Universal Audio, which is freaking fantastic. I love it. I can change my material. Um, I can change from marble, change the dome side. Man, it's just it's insane. I love it. So with the effects. Is just perfect now with the rever reverberation. With the re reverberation, reverberation, I get a tongue twister every time I say that. You, if you take this out, it, it'll get really provocative real quick on you. So about ten seconds is, <laughs> I'm, I'm good right there. But you, it will real get provocative on you. And as far as this right here, you can crank and change the shape of the dome. And as you guys can see with the reflections, depending on the shape of your room, this is exact. This is honest right here. You guys will see. The reflections, the first reflections, all of the the the, the milliseconds of the reflection, reflection. Sorry, I said refraction. Refraction is so crazy, but yeah, um, this is the perfect reverb. And my delay would pretty much be so. Most of the time, when I use my reverbs, it would pretty much be the dream verb or the spring verb, the AKG, the AKG spring verb. And then I normally spread out my reverb because it's already considered a room. So I play with the stereo imaging of it a little bit. And we got a little mid side going here. And as far as the echo and delay, I use Echo Boy. Every single time you guys are going to see me use delay, I'm going to use the Echo Boy. Unless I'm trying to do some cool tape thing and look like a pro or whatnot, <laughs> I use something else. But I automated my delays. Um, as far as my delays and I didn't automate any reverb, but I automate my delays. And since I have, you know, you can now control the volume on each individual cut. I can achieve a lot with my volume instead of um, automating it. Now, when I'm at my, at my studio in L.A., Rainio, I when I have my C24 in front of me, I automate with the fader. I just like to fader ride and do all those things. But when I'm at home at my home studio, you got fades and you got you can 
control the volume on each in each individual cut right here on each individual block. So you can achieve a lot with just that. But with delays, I noticed that I do want it to be super, super dynamic. And that's why I record vocals like this. And I this is my process because I want to preserve the dynamics of the vocals. And I also want to preserve the dynamics of, of how people hear things. Like they don't want things to be the same all the time. And, you know, and I try to, I try to apply that to my mixing. So this is pretty much what's going on. I hope this isn't rocket science. It, it's just a feeling. Creating a recording is just a feeling. And if you guys have any questions about this mix, y'all please let me know and comment below. So I really do hope that you guys found this video helpful. Helpful. I do hope that my process can contribute to you guys and in, in your creative journey and on your creative journey. It is important to me that I give you guys as much information possible um, since I do this stuff every day as a film composer, producer, singer, songwriter, pro engineer. I do this stuff every day and I want to just help you guys out. And um, you guys have any questions about anything, any plugins, anything, please comment below. I'll be happy to help you guys because this is why I'm here. I am here to help. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Archie Beats with a Z. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so you won't miss another video. You guys are absolutely awesome. I really do appreciate you guys. Don't forget to be great and create. This is your boy Archie Beats and I am signing off. Archie Beats on the beat. Yeah. Yeah.